Hello everyone. Today we are going to go over how to add equipment into Fleet Maintenance Pro. So to start, we want to make sure we are on our equipment list. So click equipment on the left hand side. On the top right, we want to click on the blue new button. And this will bring us to our new equipment screen. Now, a little bit of information here before we get started. The only piece of information that's absolutely necessary in order to save a unit is our unit number. And this has to be a unique number that is not already taken. So I'll go ahead and type one in here. I'll just call it new equipment. You'll notice on the right hand side, we've got a lot of sections of information that we can fill in. So don't worry about having to fill everything out. We don't have to fill out every box. Um, we don't have to do that. Basically fill in as much as you can and whatever makes sense for you. So that way when you pull up the equipment next time, you know which unit it is. Um, of course, we've got our columns on our equipment list. So if we have our unit column, right now we have make, model, type, displayed. So whatever information you type into these boxes will help you identify the equipment later. So fill in as much as you need. Um, this first section here is pretty self-explanatory. Make model year. Type in, of course, whatever you would like. Um, under the assignment section, location, this corresponds to our categories on the left-hand side. So I've got company name, location, and then I have my categories, cars and trucks, compressors, etc. Whatever I pick in this drop-down is whatever category my equipment's going to be in. If you forget, you can always go back in here and change this later or modify it uh, at a later time if you wish. On the right, I've got my PM schedule template and my meter configuration. So notice right now, I can go in and pick a meter for this equipment if I wish. However, if I have meters assigned to a template and I use that template with this equipment, uh, this meter configuration is gonna be overwritten. So for example, I've got mileage and kilometers right now. So if I hit select, I've got a cars and trucks template and right now it's only set to mileage for my tasks. So I'll hit OK. Notice that the meter configuration automatically grays everything out, but leaves mileage because that's what's tied to my template. So I can go ahead and type in my mileage. Underneath, I've got a custom field section. So notice when I click or put my mouse over these labels, custom one, custom two, they go from blue to red. Um, I can click on them and change the name. So these are like custom information about the unit. So I can say fuel type. I can say diesel. And it's very customizable. So whatever information is useful to you, you can place here. Now, when I go and I add new equipment, these are reset. So they'll be custom one, custom two, custom three, again. And you'll have to click them and type whatever you want. If you want, let's say in this example, fuel type, if I want fuel type to be there on all new units going forward, choose this option on the bottom, save custom labels as default, and then fuel type will stay there for all new pieces of equipment uh, afterwards. So you don't have to click on these and type them in over and over. So now we'll go into our next section, uh, specifications. So again, pretty self-explanatory. Type in what you need. Lots of custom fields here to use. Warranty, same thing. You can choose a type of warranty and choose a date. Choose the type of license associated with the, either, I believe, the, the user of the unit or just a license needed to operate, depending on the equipment that you have. And more custom fields. Purchase section. So you can go in and put this in uh, wherever you bought it from, how much. We have a depreciation section on the right. Uh, there's a formula for how it tallies the numbers here. Um, if you pull up our knowledge base on our website, there's a depreciation article that goes over that formula. On the bottom, I have ownership and status, so I can choose if it's own, if it's a customer's unit, um, if I leased or rented it, and I can put the dates in. On my loan section, I can say if it's still under loan, how much the payments are. One thing to note on this screen, on the right-hand side, I have a general expense logging section. On every unit, there is a general expense tab in the history, and also on some of the reports, there's a general expense column. Um, 
if I go in here and I set up a general expense to be automatically posted, uh, it keeps tabs on that. So when I run my report or check on the history, I can say, okay, over this date range, this is how much this unit has costed me uh, as far as my general expenses go. You're going to have columns for maintenance, um, labor costs, part costs, things like that. However, general expense is kind of in its own category, just miscellaneous items that um, you don't want to fall through the cracks. You still want to keep track of those um, to figure out how much this unit is costing you. We have the same option for insurance. You can put the policy number, you can put how much the payments are, and you can auto log those for general expense. Uh, general tire information, you can put the size and pressure. Images, this would be a picture of the equipment, um, just so you can identify it better. Attachments, you can add anything you'd like here that makes sense to reference for this unit. Uh, some people put manuals, you can do a spreadsheet, um, you can do a text file, a PDF, um, anything in here that you want to basically attach to this unit, you can always come back in here and pull that information up later. Notifications, if I want an email to be sent out about uh, maintenance, renewals, or work orders, I can click my add button and add somebody here to be notified of when these items are coming up. Expenses. So we went over this a little bit with our loans and insurance. Um, this is a way to add an expense and be able to call it whatever name you wish. So we have renewals here, car wash. So we've got some sample ones in here. If there's one that is not in the list, you can click add new expense. And I can type new expense, whatever you want it to be. And then I can put in the date, the interval. Let's say this is going to cost me $50, $50 a week. That's going to get automatically logged to this unit's expense. Uh, and it'll reflect on my reporting. My notes. Uh, I can type in anything I'd like here. Uh, most of the time, you'll probably cover it with attachments, um, manuals, things, things like that. But notes, you can type in anything you'd like here that you want to reference later. Settings, so these check boxes all correspond to our sections on the right. So I want to say 99% of the time you won't be unchecking these. You'll just leave these be. Uh, virtual mileage, so normally uh, you would go in and click on meters and you would say, okay, for unit such and such, um, today the meter reading is this amount. And then every day or every week, how, whatever interval uh, that makes sense for you, you would go in and manually uh, attach or update that meter reading. There's an option here for enable virtual. So if I check this and I type in, let's say 50, the system will automatically increment this unit's meter, in this case mileage, by 50 miles every day. So I don't have to do anything. I don't have to type any readings in. It'll automatically increment it for me. So this may be handy um, in your situation. So that pretty much sums it up here. Um, so now I'm going to save it. Uh, I should go over on the bottom, we've got two save buttons. So the first save button is if I just added this unit, I don't want to add another one, uh, pretty much done. If I hit the save plus, that means that it will blank out uh, all of the fields that I've typed in. Um, it'll save the unit information that I have in there right now, but it'll empty it out so I can immediately start typing, um, filling it out for my second unit. Um, third unit. So if you have a lot of equipment that you need to add at once, the save plus button will be really handy. You don't have to keep going back and hitting the new button every time. So let's go ahead and save this. So I get a pop up here that says I need to tell it the last time services were done. So I assigned it to a cars and trucks template. Um, so I'll go ahead and say yes here. So on this screen, it has a list of tasks that are associated with my cars and trucks template. I would basically type in the last time, date and mileage, that these services were done. So that way, moving forward, the system knows, okay, uh, let's say I just had my uh, oil change done you know, last week. So I'll go ahead and type in. And they'll say I did it at 27,000 miles. And that's it. So now it knows, okay, that was the last time it was done. If I have it set to keep track of it every, let's say, five or 10,000 miles, it would know, okay, I just had this done. I don't have to worry about it for a while. And that's pretty much it here. Just go through the tasks. Um, there's no save button here. Clicking the X on the top right automatically saves these values. 
and then that's it. So we've got our new unit here on our list. And that pretty much wraps this up. For more information, visit our website at mtcpro.com.